Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you had a marvelous holiday season. If you're anything like me, maybe you did a little bit of indulging, but that is totally fine because today we are all going to get back on track together. I'm really excited to be launching my brand new Meal Prep Made Easy series. So every Thursday this month, I'm going to be sharing a brand new meal prep menu. These are recipes that can all be made on Sunday night to help you eat well all week long. I've also compiled all of these menus into my brand new Meal Prep Made Easy ebook. It contains all of the recipes, shopping lists, and lots of tips and tricks for simplifying your Sunday meal prep. So I hope you'll check it out. All of the details are in the description box below. Now let's kick things off with today's menu. Most of the recipes in this menu are inspired by the delicious flavors of the Mediterranean. So today I'm going to be making some hearty vegetable soup a healthy chicken piccata, some roasted red skin potatoes with garlic and parsley. I'm also going to be making some beautiful steamed greens, some Tuscan bean salads in a jar, some easy caprese mini frittatas, and some really easy cottage cheese fruit cups that are perfect for that 2 p.m. snack attack. We're kicking things off today with my hearty vegetable soup. I love this soup because it's loaded with veggies, which means it's also loaded with nutrients. Now I'm making this recipe in my slow cooker, but if you don't have a slow cooker, don't sweat it. You can definitely do this in a large soup pot instead. The best part about this recipe is that you can throw all of your ingredients in, set it, and forget it. So as with most amazing soups, this recipe starts with the trifecta of flavor. We've got some beautiful onion, some carrot, and some celery. To that, I'm going to add a whole lot of greens. So I've got some finely sliced green cabbage, some beautiful green beans that I've just trimmed and chopped, and some chopped zucchini. I'll also be adding some frozen green peas, but I won't add them until the very end of cooking because you don't want them to get too mushy. And of course, what would any healthy soup be without some minced garlic? Come on, garlic is really great for you. And we've got some gorgeous cannellini beans. I'm using canned beans because I'm lazy. By all means, cook your own beans if that's how you roll. Next up, it's time to add our liquid. So I've got some diced tomatoes and some vegetable broth. You could also do this with chicken broth if you wanted to. Finally, we're just gonna season this up with some dried oregano, some fresh thyme leaves, and a whole lot of salt and pepper. I'm going to set my slow cooker on high and let this simmer away for between three and four hours. About 15 minutes before your soup is done, all you're going to wanna to do is add your frozen peas and a good handful of freshly chopped parsley. It's so rich and so hearty, perfect for the winter. We're just gonna put this lid on, let those peas cook through 10 minutes and it is all good and ready to rock. You can store it in the refrigerator for between four and five days or in the freezer for up to six months. That's why I like to make a huge batch. It's great for those nights where you don't feel like cooking. Next up on today's menu, we've got our healthy chicken piccata. Now, chicken piccata is traditionally made with breaded chicken, but today we're going to leave the breading out and just use some boneless, skinless chicken breasts. So I've got a skillet heating up on the stove and to that I'm just gonna add a really good drizzle of olive oil. I've got some beautiful chicken breasts standing by and I'm simply going to season them with some salt and some pepper and then I'm going to brown them on both sides. We're going to do them top down first. We're just trying to give them a quick brown on both sides. You'll know they're ready to flip when they release easily from the pan. Trust me, do not try to flip them before because you'll end up ruining your chicken. It's just not pretty. All right, now that these are beautifully browned on both sides, we are just going to set them aside and then we're gonna get to work on our beautiful sauce. To the same skillet, we are going to add another drizzle of olive oil and some minced garlic and capers. Capers have a ton of flavor, so a little can go a long way. You're going to cook your garlic and your capers for about 30 seconds before it's time to add your white wine, your chicken broth, and some freshly squeezed lemon juice. Now, if you didn't want to cook with alcohol, you could definitely leave the white wine out and just add a little more chicken broth. That is totally fine. I'm going to give this all a stir. Get up all those beautiful brown bits. That's all that chicken flavor that's been left behind in the pan. You're going to let this tasty mixture come to a boil, and then we're going to return our chicken back into the pan, 
turn our heat down to medium low, cover them, and let them simmer for about 10 minutes or until they reach an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the chicken is cooked through, we can remove it from our skillet and then create a really simple pan gravy using all the delicious juices left behind. All I'm going to do is whisk some cornstarch and some water together and then whisk it back into the juices. We're gonna simmer it for about a minute until it thickens up and it's really as simple as that. If you're eating this right away, you can drizzle it all over your chicken and if you're not, you can just store it for when you're ready to serve it. I'm gonna finish all of this chicken awesomeness off with a little bit of freshly chopped parsley. I love this recipe because it's fresh and citrusy and so easy to make. It can be served immediately or stored in the refrigerator for up to three days. I like it best when partnered with these beautiful roasted red potatoes I'm going to show you now. So for this recipe, I'm starting with some beautiful red potatoes that I've scrubbed well and then cut into cubes. I like leaving the skin on these potatoes because A, I think they look beautiful and B, they have a ton of nutrition. So I've got these beautiful potatoes in a bowl and I'm going to season them really simply with some olive oil, some garlic powder, and some salt and pepper. When I'm roasting potatoes, I prefer to use powdered garlic as opposed to regular garlic because I find regular garlic burns in the oven. So I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. I'm gonna pop my potatoes in and I'm going to flip them after about 15 minutes. After another 10 to 15 minutes, they should be golden and ready to rock. I like to finish them off with a little bit of freshly chopped parsley, because let's be honest, freshly chopped parsley makes everything better. Most things better. Breakfast cereal, probably not, but most things better. It can be served immediately or stored in the refrigerator for three or four days. Next up, it's time to talk about steaming some green veggies. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you, the fact is, there is never going to be a weeknight where I feel like cooking vegetables. So I like to cook all of my veggies during my meal prep and then I have them ready all week long. For these beautiful steamed veggies, I'm going to be steaming some broccoli, some green beans, and some beautiful asparagus. So you have the option when it comes to your greens to steam them all separately, or you can go rogue like I do and steam them all at once. We are going to put our toughest vegetables on the bottom. In this case, that's broccoli, so those are going to cook the most slowly. And then we are going to add our green beans and then our asparagus. I've got a pot on the stove with about an inch of water heating up, and to that I'm going to add my steamer pot. Once my veggies are prepped, I'm simply going to steam them for five to seven minutes or until they become bright green. You'll wanna give them a few shakes during cooking to make sure everything in your steamer cooks evenly. To finish them off, I'm just gonna run them under cold water to stop the cooking process. And then what you have are these beautiful steamed veggies. They can be eaten on their own or added to things like pastas, stir fries, or salads. I can store them in my refrigerator for three or four days. Now it's time to talk lunches. And for me, that means salads in a jar. For today's menu, I'm making my beautiful Mediterranean-inspired bean salad. I love this recipe because it's loaded with flavor, protein-packed, and also happens to be completely vegan. So we're getting started with some cannellini beans. I'm using canned beans that I've just rinsed and drained. By all means, if you feel like cooking your own beans, go right ahead. To that, I'm going to add some awesome Mediterranean flavors. So I've chopped up some marinated artichokes, some sun-dried tomatoes, some roasted red peppers, and I've got a good helping of Kalamata olives, which pack a nice salty flavor. All of these items can either be found fresh in your deli or jarred in the aisle with all the pickles and the olives. Then I'm going to add some beautiful fresh parsley, and then we are going to create the simplest dressing ever. I'm going to add a good glug of olive oil, a couple tablespoons of white wine vinegar, some freshly squeezed lemon juice, we're gonna season this with just some salt and pepper. And we're gonna to toss it up, my friends. And then I'm going to divide my bean mixture into five jars. To each jar, I'm actually going to add some baby spinach. Now the concept here is really simple. We're gonna keep the spinach on the top of the jars so that it doesn't get wilty and overdressed. And then when you're ready to eat the salads, you're just gonna give everything a really good shake. And then everything will be evenly dressed. 
These babies will last in the refrigerator for between four and five days. They really do make the perfect lunch on the go. Now it's time to talk breakfast for the week. And for me, that means my beautiful Caprese mini frittatas. For these yummy frittatas, I'm going to get started by whipping up my egg mixture. So all I'm going to do is whisk some eggs, some milk, some salt, and some pepper. For this recipe, I'm using a muffin tin lined with some silicone baking cups. If you don't have silicone baking cups, it's not a problem, but you will want to grease your pan really, really well because these frittatas love to stick. Next, I'm going to build in all of my beautiful caprese flavors. We're simply going to add a handful of beautiful cherry tomatoes that I've cut in half, a little bit of mozzarella cheese, and some freshly chopped basil. We're gonna finish off each cup with a little bit of our egg mixture, and then into the oven these go at 375 for between 10 and 15 minutes. These lovely frittatas can be stored in the refrigerator for between four and five days. They can be eaten cold or reheated in the microwave. For snack this week, we are making some cottage cheese fruit cups. I know there are some cottage cheese haters out there. If you're not loving the cottage cheese, by all means, you can replace it in this recipe with some plain Greek yogurt. So I've got five containers, and all I'm going to do is place about a third of a cup of cottage cheese in each one. Next, I'm going to drizzle in a little bit of honey and add some beautiful fruit. In this case, I'm using some finely diced cantaloupe, some diced honeydew, and some red grapes that I've just cut in half. But you can use any kind of fruit you like. You don't have to be as fussy as I am. You could just mix them all together. You don't have to layer them, but I've said it before and I'll say it again. You eat with your eyes first. Reach for this during your two o'clock slump and you are off to the races, my friends. These will last in the refrigerator for between four and five days. They are the perfect mid-afternoon snack to help get you through to dinner. Speaking of snacks, in my house, I always like to have some fresh veggies on hand for when I'm feeling peckish. For today's menu, I've got some cherry tomatoes, some celery sticks, and some fresh red bell pepper. That is the single best way to ensure you are getting enough veggies in your diet and you're making healthier choices. Perfect for guilt-free munching on the go. I really hope you guys love today's menu as much as I do. And if you give any of these recipes a try, be sure to tweet or Instagram me a photo because you know I love seeing what you're coming up with in your very own kitchens. And don't forget that today's menu and a whole lot more can be found in my brand new Meal Prep Made Easy eBook. It's got all of the recipes, shopping lists, and lots of tips and tricks for making Sunday meal prep a total cinch. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe because there is lots more meal prep where this came from.